my name is Sofia. In today's Widots user guide, we will learn how to create a conditional event or alert. As you might already know, a conditional is any if-then statement of a logical expression that defines an outcome. So now, let's begin. Before setting up any event, let's first look at Widots events logic. What causes a trigger to be activated and when to expect an event to be sent. So in this graphic, you can see how the blue line, which represents the data, passes through the threshold, thus triggering an event. Here you can see. Then the data must fall below the threshold again before UbiDots will trigger the next event. So you can see here, it is the first time the event is triggered, it stays up the threshold, but nothing, you're not gonna get any other alerts until it goes down the threshold and then go up the threshold again where you will get the second alert. It is really important that you know that after the alert is triggered, the subsequent values will not activate the trigger again as I just explained. And for the second event to be sent, the input data must fall outside the trigger threshold and then return again. With this in mind, let's see how the events engine will work in your application. For this guide, I have gone ahead and set up some widgets and devices to simulate data flows to help me control the data. Our data is meant to emulate a cold storage monitoring solution. In our example event, I'm wanting to know if temperature exceeds 34 degrees. To create an event or an, an, to create an, event or an alert, in Uidots, you have to select the device management drop-down and then click on events. Then you click on the plus sign icon and when you arrive to the events window, you will first need to work on the if triggers tab and then you have the then actions tab. So let's select the information that would work as a trigger. You need to select the variables and the devices, which in this case will only be temperature, but I need you to know that you can select different variables and when you select different variables, they immediately become an or statement that will work independently, so if any statement triggers, you will get an alarm. Then after selecting the variables, you need to select the conditionals. You can choose from has been inactive, that will alert you when the, your device is off. Also, you can choose position, that is when you're working with geofences, and you can choose values, that is what we are going to work with today. You have the characteristics, Today I'm going to work with greater than or equal to, so if the value is greater than or equal to the number I'm going to decide here, you will get an alert. You then select the value, which in this case is 34 degrees, and you select the period of time that needs to happen before you get the trigger. Let's say 0.5 minutes. It is also important to note that if you want to add another conditional, you just select the AND or the OR, and then you can create another conditional that work maybe independently in the case of the OR, or in the case of the AND, you will have another condition that if both of them triggers, then you will get an alert. It is very important that you know that when you create an OR conditional statement, the triggers will always act independently. This means that when any OR statement is fulfilled, the event will be activated. Now that you completed your event logic, you click on this blue arrow and you will be directed to the then actions tab. Then you click on the plus sign and there you will find the different ways you can get the alert. So you can choose from sending emails, you can choose to get an SMS, you can choose to get a telegram, a slack message, you can also trigger a webhook or you could set a variable. Setting a variable will work in order to trigger an action in other of your devices or in controller automation. For example, in this case, when the temperature goes up 34 degrees, I want my fan to be turned on so the temperature can go down again. In this case, I'm gonna work with email. And the first thing I will need to do is just put the email which will receive the alert. I can also put more emails just by adding a comment and separating the email. And I can change or customize the subject and the message. I will change the name, but I will stay with the rest of the default message 
since it will allow me to know first the variable name which in this case will be temperature then it will tell me the value which triggered the event and it would tell me at what time was the event triggered this is an automatic or the default message I have and it takes the different information or these different variables from Widots, from our platform. I can also add different specific data inputs for the, in the subject and I have the same options in the message but in this case this works perfectly for me so I will just click on the check mark and I have the first event ready. The last step that I need to do is that when I already see the events I have, I just click on the arrow and I will have to select the time in which the alarm will trigger or the event will trigger. So first put an event name, in this case would be called storage room. And now you have to select the time period in which you will get the emails. The default it's 24 7 when the box is blue it's because it's selected so you get alerts during that period when it is white is because you're not gonna get the alerts on that period i'm gonna say monday through friday and 24 hours just click on the green check mark and you're done with your first event now that you created your event go back to the dashboard here in my dashboard, I have the widgets that will simulate the data. The temperature right now of the fridge is 16 degrees. If it stays below 34, I'm not getting any alert. But if it goes up 34, like here 40, for more than 0.5 minutes, then I will get an email, as you can see right here. If it stays up the threshold, I'm not getting any other alerts, but whenever it goes down the threshold and then up again for more than 0.5 minutes, you get a second alert. To verify that the event was sent, you go to events again, and then you click on the log icon here. And as you can see, I got an email sent in the first time my data passes the threshold and I have the second email when the data passes the threshold for a second time. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. Now you can create different events and alerts to stay informed and on time. Remember, if you want to learn more tips and tricks about Widots, subscribe to our channel. Bye, see you later!